I've got a book telling me I didn't go to the moon that, that day, okay? There's a book there when all, you can't see stars in the daytime, the shadows in her office. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. Shadows in her uncle. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. Go ahead. As I step off at the service at Torres Littrell, I'd like to dedicate the first step of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. Let's see if I can't crack the uh, corner and get that contact. See if I can't get a pottery. It's obviously very, uh, very cohesive because it's, it's, uh, the bottom of the core is not smooth. It's very jaggedy and fragmental-like. It's a rock composed of many fragments of many sizes and many shapes. When we return this rock, or some of the others like it to Houston, we'd like to share a piece of this rock with so many of the countries throughout the world. We hope that this will be a symbol of what our feelings are, what the feelings of the Apollo program are, and a symbol of mankind that we can live in peace and harmony in the future. I got to a point on, uh, on my two flights to the moon, particularly my last flight when I actually lived, actually made the moon my home for over three days. You know, you, be, you, you become detached from one planet. You become detached from Earth, which is your identity with reality. But we launched at night, at a circle of the Earth about uh, one and a half times and headed out to the moon for three-day voyage when we got there. So the engine you, is loud? You get, you get, pardon? Is the engine loud as you're descending? Well, yeah, well, the engine is very loud. It's very difficult to tell the difference between feeling sound and hearing sound, but yes, it's loud. When you were in it, you couldn't hear it in the vacuum of space. It's, it's a very kinetic, very dynamic period of about 10 to 12 minutes. And you get down to 200 feet, and you go through an area where you're either gonna land or you're basically gonna crash. So is the Earth, I guess, is six times bigger than Earth, the moon is from Earth? The, the, is Earth right? the Earth is about four times bigger than a full moon looks to us from Earth. It was very close to the horizon on Apollo 17, and that was unique for us. We didn't have to look up like most of the other flights from most of the other landing sites were to look at the Earth. I mean, I just glance over my shoulder, and there's the Earth. It was there all the time. It was so prominent. It was almost involuntarily while you're going about your work and being a lunar geologist and exploring and driving a rover, you'd always be confronted by the Earth itself. It was, I tell you what, it was almost like a security blanket uh, because you knew it was there. All right, is this a Bible? Yeah, absolutely, it's I my Bible. I think this is ludicrous, and I want you to put that on film. It's ludicrous. I swear. Under penalty of perjury? I swear, swear under per penalty of perjury. Treason? And, treason. And eternal damnation. And eternal damnation. That and, I walked and on the moon death, during Apollo that, 17. That I walked on the moon on Apollo 17 for 75 hours. I lived on the moon for Apollo, on Apollo 17 for 75 hours. 
Well, six other astronauts did not swear in the Bible when they had the opportunity. Well, that's fine. I probably, you know why they didn't? The same reason I almost didn't, because it's absolutely ludicrous for you to ask me that. I, I, I probably would have done what the other six did, because I'm just as stubborn as anybody else. I said, I don't need to prove to you that I went to the moon. I know I went. But I did that. You can put that on tape, and it's there, and you can show it to anybody you want. You know what I did with the Hasselblad? He left it's it. Sitting, it's sitting face up to the sun without a back on it so that somebody, somebody's going to go back and find out what kind of deterioration the lens suffered because it was facing straight up. Where is the lunar rover? It's a mile behind the... How do you think we took the pictures of the liftoff on Apollo 17 with a television camera? How do you think we missed them on Apollo 16 because of the time delay? By the time the guy sent the signal, it was gone and the camera couldn't track fast enough. So on 17, he sent the signal a second and a half or three quarters of a second earlier so that the camera got the signal and we were trying. How do you think that happened? I've got a book telling me I didn't go to the moon that, that thick, okay? There's a book there when all, you can't see stars in the daytime and the shadows in the wrong place. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. There's a book there when all, you can't see stars in the daytime and the shadows in the wrong place. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. Millions watched as these space age heroes risked their lives on the new frontier. It was dangerous stuff and their wives knew it. It was scary, I mean, when you stop and think the person you love is sitting on top of a rocket doing something that few have done. We thought, how can anybody be that brave? The astronauts were global superstars and their wives had to share them with the rest of the world. We are surrounded by groupies. They are like rock stars. And I'm not sure which husbands were unfaithful and which ones weren't, but I would say that it was a great temptation for them. They were thrown into a lifestyle that didn't mitigate well for good marriages. These women were behind the most famous men in the galaxy. When I met him, he was in the Navy. He was a Navy jet pilot. He used to say he was, uh, what do you say, 195 pounds of speed, dynamite, and deception. 195 pounds of speed, dynamite, and deception. 195 pounds of speed, dynamite, and deception. And deception. Nunca se ve bailando en la pista sola. Llega a montarla con sus amigas gastando el dólar. Me dice peso que será lo que tiene esa morra.